Hey guys, this is Sean with Ski Jeep. Today I'll be editing photos from my recent trip out on the Rattlesnake Trail in Northwest Utah. I'll share with you a few techniques I use to get great images on the trail. Okay, I've got my photos imported into Adobe Lightroom. And as I'm looking through the photos, one thing that's kind of difficult to do on a trail like Rattlesnake, for instance, especially in the winter time when there's snow, is there's just a lot going on in the photos. Like this trail is in a canyon, so there's not a lot of uh, room to shoot. And so you're shooting and almost everything is in focus, which makes it a little bit harder to kind of focus the eye and make a really good photo. So this particular photo, um, Jeep looks cool. It's got a good flex, good pose. But there's just a lot of things fighting for the attention in this photo, like this white snow, a little bit overexposed, um, the trees back here, just a lot of texture going on and a lot of contrast. So there's not a lot of visual excitement for this photo to be like a nice photograph. So what I like to try to do is, and especially on a trail like this, is I like to try to shoot behind trees and kind of blur some of the foreground. So one of the techniques in photography is, is I like to try to separate the photo into three different planes. And so let's just look at this photo again. We have the foreground, the main subject, our vehicle, and then the background. So in these super tight trails, it's hard to kind of distinguish those three different planes because everything's so tight and condensed. And so one thing we can control is like the foreground. I can always go behind a tree or behind a rock and kind of blur out that foreground so that you know it kind of separates it from the main subject. Now the background a little bit harder to do because you need distance um, away from the vehicle um, to actually create that that blur effect or that separation. And so we'll have to use a, kind of some different techniques in our editing to kind of create that separation at least from the background. And so as I'm looking at the photos I think the photo we'd like to try to work with is, is this guy right here. We've got a little bit of a blur of the, the tree here. I like how the vehicle is kind of coming out of that tree or you know behind that tree. Kind of creates a little bit of movement. Um, even though I'm not sitting in the Jeep and I'm actually out taking photos, it, it kind of has the feel of like it's coming around the corner and kind of creates a little bit of visual excitement for me. So that's why I'm choosing this one. And I think I can work with the background on this one and kind of create that separation. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into develop. And first thing I always do is I always just start with my crop. Um, that's just how I like to do it because I'm usually using these for Instagram. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a square and just start just doing some subtle manipulations here with the crop and kind of create the effect I want. I am kind of tilting it a little because I think that'll kind of create a little bit more of that, that action that I think will give it a little bit more of that visual excitement. And I think I'm just gonna scooch that over just a little. All right, and that's looking pretty good for me. Next thing I'm gonna do is just kind of start manipulating some of the, um, the photo um, settings, but I'm kind of thinking of the background first. The background of foreground is what I'm thinking of right now. And then I'm gonna create a mask um, around the Jeep in just a minute and start to manipulate that. So mainly I'm thinking of the background. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and just start creating just a few minor adjustments here. One thing I like to do is hold down my Alt Option key when I'm doing some of these settings. And I can start to kind of see exactly what's white and what's black. And as I'm doing the, the white, so anything that starts to show up on there, like the white or that blue there, that's actually a true white. And so I want to be kind of careful not to get too much like overexposed. This light right here that's shining is kind of overexposed and it's pretty bright. So that'll be a hard one to work with, but I think, I think that's small enough that's forgivable. Kind of go into my blacks. You just want a little bit of black to show. And then one thing, so one technique to kind of create that separation from the background is we can like blur it out. So this clarity setting, if I put it just all the way, it's gonna look kind of fake and phony, but you'll see the background start to blur. And that's what we want to do. Now, yeah, I'm blurring the Jeep also, 
but we're gonna go back in with a mask and like bring that detail back. And so I'm gonna bump the clarity down like a decent amount, right around 40 I think, just to soften that background. And that's gonna kind of manipulate the photo enough that I can create that separation from the foreground, from the subject, from the background. All right, then I might just tighten up the vibrance just a little. Sometimes I don't like to have the hues too strong, so I'll bump the saturation down a little. Another way to help kind of create that separation is um, using the, the hue, saturation, and luminance on the actual specific colors. And so I'll kind of just go in here and play with a few different settings and for my vehicle and for this photo to see, you know, I like to just play with them and, and I'll just kind of start sliding them around and go extreme and then back them off a little just to see what, what they're affecting. And every photo, I mean, this will completely change the feel of what the photo is. Is it a cold photo? Is it is it more vibrant and, and like warm? And as you kind of start sliding these sliders, you can see like this aqua is the windshield. And so I like to, for some reason, I like to boost up the windshield a little. I think it's kind of cool. My white Jeep picks up a lot of the blues and I don't like to have too much blue in there. So I always will back the blue off a little on my white Jeep. And usually purple and magenta, there's not much that, that are affected by those for, for the photos I've been shooting lately. And then the luminance, that's your brightness or your darkness. So you can just kind of play with those a little. And since I'm kind of trying to create some separation from the Jeep and the background, the ground and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and darken my yellow, my oranges a little, because that's some of that dirt and some of the tree there. Okay, I'm kind of liking the feel of mainly like the background. Now it's time to go in and start manipulating the actual Jeep. We're gonna create a mask. So we click on the mask option. Sometimes when I'm, I'm lazy or certain photos, I can get away with just doing like a radial mask. And that's where I just click and drag like a circle. And then anything in that circle is gonna be manipulated by the settings I change. This particular photo, there's a lot of things going on in it, so I think I need to actually use the brush tool and brush in um, the actual Jeep. You can use your bracketing tools on your keyboard to make this tool smaller or bigger. And so as you start doing it, if you need to go a little bit smaller, maybe around the edges here, you can, you can start to you know, change the size of that. And if you accidentally kind of go over um, it's not a big deal. You can you can actually go back in and, and kind of erase just that that portion. And so I'm going to be kind of loose here to to start with, and and then I'll I'll go back in. Now what I can do is hold down my Alt Option key, and you see how it turns into a minus sign. That'll actually subtract. And then there's also another cool thing is that with the Shift, if you hold down Shift and then the bracketing tool bigger or smaller, that outer circle gets bigger and smaller. And what that is, is it's the, the feathering. So if you go really tight, it'll make like a really tight, like red, like line there. And if you go looser, it'll be nice and feathered. And you can do the same thing, getting fancy here, but if you hold down all option for the minus, you can go bigger or smaller, and then if you hold down all option with the shift key and then bracket bigger or smaller, and that's that's gonna adjust the feathering on the erase, and that's kind of a cool thing also. Alright, and so I'm gonna keep it fairly oops. I'm gonna keep it fairly feathered just because I'm pretty loose on this, and it's okay if it's not exact, because I'm not doing any crazy manipulations. I'm just going to do some some very whoops. I'm just going to do some very minor kind of things. All right, now that I've created the mask around the Jeep, I'm going to just hide the red so that I can actually see the Jeep and make the edits I need to and, and see it live. And so now I'm just going to just make some basic manipulations here. And some of it is just trial and error. You just need to kind of play with things. Um, I almost always will boost up the shadow so I can see a little bit more underneath the bumper or the tires. 
creates a little bit more, you know, detail I can see in the Jeep. Since the background and the foreground, we bumped the clarity down so far and kind of blurred everything, the Jeep is actually not really fully in focus right now. So I'm going to go back down and look at the main photo and it looks like I took the clarity down to 42. So I need to bump up the clarity for the Jeep at least to 42 to be back to normal how I shot it. And a lot of times I'll bump it up even more just to kind of create that excitement. And so once again, I'm just going to go extreme either way so you can see kind of how it affects it. And so if you go too far, I feel like it almost looks fake. It looks too manipulated. And so I'm just going to, you know, go up a little bit. I like to bump it up a bit, but not over the top. And then there's a little toggle here. So if you ever want to just kind of look at, you know, what did that particular mask kind of do for me? You can kind of just toggle it on and off and see the, the difference. All right. I think the last thing I'm going to do is I just, I still feel like I need to create a little bit more separation from the background. I'm going to create one more mask. I can just click the mask tool and then click the plus sign to add a new mask. And this time I'm going to use the linear gradient tool and I'm just going to create a little gradient up here in the top corner coming down to the Jeep. It's going to, I'm going to uncheck the show and now I'm just going to do just some very subtle manipulations. I might just create a little bit of black in there, take any white kind of down lower or any highlights bring down. And what I'm doing is I just want to darken a little bit of this corner up here but just very subtle and that dark, you know, I'm just creating some contrast, which will naturally create that separation. The Jeep's so white, my Jeep's white. So I just want to create some darkness behind it and it'll just pop that Jeep out. And then I might even adjust the sharpness again here also and see how I can kind of create some blur. If I go too extreme, it's not going to look believable. So I'm just going to do a little bit and close that. And as I'm looking at the, the hood of the Jeep, I feel like it just looks almost overexposed. So I'm just gonna check that one more time. I think it's just right on the brink of, of being overexposed. And so I'm just gonna bring that down, make sure my highlights are all the way down. All right, I think that does it. Here's a little side-by-side. -side. Um, first pictures are after and second pictures are before. So it's nice to kind of see where we came from and I always will look before and after pictures before I kind of do my final publish just to make sure I didn't manipulate it too much and it doesn't look believable anymore. So I like to kind of have that side by side just to kind of keep me in check. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful and you learned a few new tips and tricks to help you uh, take great photos of your vehicle out on the trail. Thanks for watching.